we know what the fundraiser is really for, Sabrina replied. You want to use the money to buy the whole town. Why don't you just dip into the money you've called out everyone for the last 200 years? You dare question my honor, Charming growled. I haven't taken a penny out of this town. The rumors about my finances are greatly exaggerated. Well then, do you believe I would live like this if I didn't have to? Granny wrote and gazed around the room. No, I don't, she answered. Services had to be cut drastically. Transportation, education, I've even had to fire the crew of workers who punched statues of me in the park. Mr. Seven has agreed to a substantial cut and pay, and I haven't taken a salary in weeks. I had to lay off three force of the town's police force, which, since there were only four police officers to begin with, leaves me with Hampstead. The sheriff works hard, and he's smart as a whip, but he's only one pig. Who stretch too thin and just don't have the resources to investigate a crime, let alone a murder committed by the scarlet hand. I need your help, and since most of this is your family's fault, I think it's your responsibility. So now the scarlet hand exists, sir. Why do you lie about it back at the school? Sabrina asked. Because I didn't need the citizens of this town to panic. If word got out that there were a t was a terrorist group killing people, there would be chaos in the streets. Hampstead can barely keep up now with speeding tickets and jaywalkers. Your family has proven to be good detectives. You're persistent and lucky and stubborn, Chan continued. If you don't stop whatever did that to the teacher, then it won't get stopped. Why do you care what happens to a human teacher? Sabrina said. I thought you hated humans. Charming said nothing. You don't want anything bad to happen to Miss White, Daphne cried. You, want, you are in love with her. You want to kiss and hug her. Nonsense, a man shouted. I can't have terrorists running around the elementary school, even if I approve of who they're killing. You want to write her love notes. The little girl persisted. You want to hold her hand in the park and look at puppies in the pet store. Is there an off button for this one? Charming asked Granny Welder. The old woman grinned at the mayor. You haven't answered the question. All right, Charming surrendered. Snow has a knack for getting in trouble. I would sleep better at night, knowing she is safe. Of course, we'll do what we can, Granny Welder assured him. What are you going to do for us? Sabrina asked. The old woman looked at the girl. Horror. Leaving. We would never take payment for helping folks. Granny, finding the killer is going to take a lot of time. Time that we could use to find mom and dad, Sabrina argued. What can I do? Johnny said. I can't exactly send hands up to search everyone's homes. No, but you have connections and we don't. To Sabrina, people will talk to you. Maybe there is something we could use. Do something magical lying around we don't know anything about. Use your imagination, Billy. Chummy thought for a moment. You have my word. He raised his right hand. You'll have to do, Sabrina said as she raised her hand as well. Granny Wilder and Daphne did the same. I do solemnly swear to protect and serve the inhabitants of. What does inhabitants mean? Daphne interrupted. It means the people who live in a particular place. Her sister answered, noting Charmy's impatient face. Why didn't you just say the people then? The little girl asked. Let him finish, Lieblings, Granny Rhoda said. I do solemnly swear, Charmy started over, to protect and serve the people of. Very poor landing to the best of my ability. I vow to protect the peace, secure the safety, and uphold the rule of law. The girls repeated what he said, word for word, and then lowered their hands. You are now officially deputized under the laws of Ferry Port Landing, the mayor said, as he pulled out a set of keys and handed them to Granny Rhoda. What are these? 
Granny said, looking down at the key ring. Keys to the school, Charlie said. You need them to get inside. Granny smiled and handed the keys back to the mayor. I've got my own set, thanks, she said. Charlie scowled and shoved the keys back into his pocket. Well, I'd love to keep this happy event going all night, but as you know, I can't stand you people, he said, leading them to the door. As his hand clutched the knob, he turned and looked the girls in their eyes. Snow is important to me. I would appreciate you keeping a close eye on her. No problem, Billy, Daphne replied, wrapping her arms around the mayor and hugging him tightly. It's so romantic. Charmy sneered, opened the door, and forcefully shoved the family outside. You should really tell her that you love her, Daphne said, and right before the mayor slammed the door in her face. Sabrina had been to a lot of schools in the last year and a half and they all had a few things in common. Every one of them had a couple of garage teachers, a bully, a bully's punching bag, a weird cafeteria lady, a bathroom that everyone was afraid to go into, and a librarian who worshipped something called the Dewey Decimal System. None of them, none of those schools, however, had a teacher's killing monster scurrying through its hallways, and that being said, New York City had everything. Granny Rhoda was convinced that a monster, maybe walking with a scarlet hand, had killed Mr. Grubner. Not knowing exactly what a monster looked like or where it might be now was doing a number on Sabrina's nerves as her grandma led the girls through the darkened hallways of the school. The long shadows cast by the second sun looked like dinosaurs and invading aliens. Every little creak sounded like the tread of Bigfoot or a swamp monster. And worse, Grubner's bloodless purple face appeared every time Sabrina closed her eyes. All she wanted to do was run back to the car and hide under Elvis's blanket. But Granny insisted they take another look at the crime scene. For once, the girl wished Mr. Cairns was by their side. But a skinny old man had chosen to stay in the car and meditate in the freezing cold. Luckily, Granny had relented to Elvis's begging. And the big dog had now trotted down the hall beside them. Mr. Cannis looks terrible, and for him, that's particularly bad, Sabrina said to the old woman as they crept along. In the past, he has been able to tap into the wolf's strengths without losing himself, her grandmother explained. But this time, he made a complete transformation, and worse, he tasted human blood. It's been a very long time since that has happened and the wolf is not going to be put away without a fight. Don't worry, children. Mr. Cannis will win this battle. And if he doesn't, Sabrina asked, he will. I'm sure he'll be happy that you are concerned for his well-being. I'm more concerned about waking up in his belly, Sabrina thought. When they got to Sabrina's homeroom, the crime scene tape and Grumpner's body were already gone. The broken window had been replaced and all the cobwebs were cleared away. Even the long red hand painted on the chalkboard was gone. Other than some misplaced dust, there was no evidence of the gruesome scene they'd witnessed only hours before. Principal Hamlin had obviously cleaned the place up. Whatever it was didn't catch him by surprise, Granny Rhoda said, pushing a desk back into its row. The way these desks are scattered, it looks like Mr. Grubner tried to fight back. Sabrina shuddered as she imagined a teacher fighting off his attacker. Whether it was a giant spider or a thousand little ones, the fact was that the man's death had been a nightmare for him. Even a grouch like Grumpner didn't deserve to die so horribly. Why are we here now? Daphne asked as they walked into the classroom. We'll never find anything in the dark. Some of the best clues are found in the dark. Granny said. She crossed the room and opened Grumpner's desk drawers. They were empty except for the bottom one. Inside was a picture of a teacher and a woman. They were on a pontoon boat enjoying an afternoon on the Hudson River. Grumpner and the woman each had a glass of champagne in their hands and were toasting each other. His wife, Sabrina asked, as Granny showed her the picture. I can't imagine that Mr. Cranky found anyone to marry him. He was probably a very different man at home, the old woman replied. 
You told me once you thought your father was too careful, but Henry grew kinder, threw caution to the wind. There are many sides to us all. His wife must be very sad. Daphne sighed. Granny sighed too. I suppose she is. Well, we found a picture. Edna said, eyeing a shadow in the corner that looked like the boogie man. Can we go now? This place is giving me the willies. Don't be scared, Daphne said. I'm a police officer, Mom. I'll protect you. She leaned down and struggled off about, then walked around the room, mimicking Sheriff Hamster's bow-legged gait. Sabrina laughed so hard she snorted. Granny reached into her handbag and pulled out a familiar pair of infrared goggles. Don't worry, Liebling's. I'm hurrying," she said as she put the goggles over her eyes and looked around the room, finally focusing on the drawer. Aha! Children, come and take a look. The girls hurried to their grandmother. Daphne took the goggles and looked down the floor. That's so punk rock," she said, eager for a turn. Sabrina snatched the goggles away from her sister and peered through the special lenses. They revealed ghostly white footprints, the last traces of the late Mister Dragner. Granny Rowan reached down and ran her finger across the floor. When she lifted it, there was a white powder on it. The blood thickens," she said, holding her chalky finger up to Sabrina's eyes. Mister Dragner's feet were covered in some kind of dust. A bit of the dust floated up into Sabrina's nose, and she sneezed violently. The zoom height," Granny Rhoda said. "It came from out in the hallway," Sabrina said, opening the note, the door, and following the glowing footprints. Notice anything about the steps?" her grandmother asked, following closely behind. "They're very far apart," the girl said. "The three of my steps are equal to about one of his." "That's because he was running," the old woman informed her. Sabrina was impressed. Granny Rhoda was a natural detective, and Sabrina wondered if she'd ever be as smart. The footprints came from the stairs to the first floor, and the girl headed in that direction until suddenly the infrared goggles were snatched off her head. "Hey," she complained as she turned on her little sister. "If you wanted to wear them, all you had to do was ask." But Granny and Daphne said nothing. They were looking at the ceiling with odd expressions. Sabrina followed their gaze. And what she saw sent a shock down to her toes. Hanging upside down above them was a fat, round-faced creature. Its head and feet were amphibious, each with slimy, bumpy skin and a puffed, bulbous pouch under its lower lip. But it had the arms, legs, and body of a human being. It was the creature's long, sticky green tongue that had snatched the goggles off Sabrina's head and now dragged them in and out of the mat. Of its mouth, as if it were wondering whether they might make a good snack. Eventually, it spit them out at Sabrina's feet, spraying sticky saliva all over the girl's pants. "Uh, no thanks. You can keep them," Sabrina said, wiping the goop off her pajamas. The frog monster let out an odd, feminine giggle and puffed up its huge ear sack. Sabrina had seen the frogs do just the same thing on TV. It was something they did when they were preparing to eat, and she suddenly had the feeling that she was on the menu. Run! She cried. The grooms and Elvis spun around and ran back down the hallway, but the monster leaped on the ceiling and landed in front of them, blocking their path. I spy with my little eye. The frog girl gurgled. Something dead. Chapter five. Granny Rhoda swung her handbag at the frog girl and cracked her on her forehead. The monster groaned and fell to the ground. Sabrina had seen what sort of stuff the old woman kept in her purse. Everything from spy goggles to rolls of quarters, so she knew it packed quite a wall up. It would take the frog girl a while to get up if she got up at all. Not wasting any time, the grim woman spun the opposite direction and raced down the stairs. I was. This video and probably the last.